Good morning guys, welcome back to the GKP. Well, got a couple of jobs to do, obviously, other than the general pond maintenance, but as spoken about in my last video, we're going to do a replacement seal kit for the slide valve. Um, not something I've ever done before, but what I'm going to do, we're going to put camera on a tripod and let you uh, watch how it is and we'll work through it together and see how simple it is to do. I've just spent camera on. Everybody looks to be doing well. No losses of water out of the pond this week. Up to press. Everybody's on the move. Everybody's cruising around all right. And everybody's looking good. Temperatures have dropped down a heck of a lot. They are a little bit uh, on the move use really now just because I've come out. But uh, they have been clustering up down there at the bottom end. But Everything at press, up to press, so far this week, is socket sets what we're going to need for the replacement of this, which is the uh, valve seals, inch and a half, which are going to be going in this one, just down here. But to do so, what I'm going to have to do is, this is what we're talking about again, and all last week, all the barrels all, all sweated up, the condensation, uh, what I'm going to be doing is switching off the pump, stopping the water flow. Once we've done that, I'm going to be draining down this barrel to below, sort of this point down about here. I'm not going to completely empty it. Uh, the reason for that is so that the water doesn't back flow out of this pipe and come and end up with tons all over the floor again. So hopefully that will be then allowed to back flow as much as we possibly can. Give it an hour or so. And then I'm going to take this one apart and put the new seals in and pop it back together and I'll show you how we do it or how I do it when we work through it together so give us five minutes so we'll get all this shut down filter swimmed off this one drained off in fact to the complete fair we could probably do it together as well so oh, lovely heater on it's nice and warm I'll pull the plug to the main power and that switches off the pump We'll let it just slowly come to a to a stop. But everything's running pretty damn good. Everything's running pretty well. But a cold nip is in the air again. Pond is down to six degrees at present. And I think it's a fair cooler out there as well. 12.3 degrees outside. Six degrees inside the filter. So six degrees inside the pond. We'll just let this slowly come to a stop and then what I'm going to do then is uh, ditch this one, let that one go, just let all the water out of that filter barrel, once it gets down below sort of like the infill level then I know nothing's going to flow back into this pipe from this barrel because it'll just keep constantly running. It will mean that we have to reprime the pump when I'm done, but it's easy to do, not a problem. It's only a couple of jugs of water to reprime it back up again. <coughs> but what I wanted to do now is to let all that water out and for it to drain away. That barrel's nearly empty now, I can hear it gurgling. There we go. That's that empty. And then I'll let this flow back in, sorry, and let this flow back. And although the, you know, the, it's got a non-return valve, they're not 100%. They do let a little bit drain back slowly. So I'm gonna let that drain back into the pond and then we'll make a start on removing this and stripping it together and seeing what needs to be done and now we replace it. So, while I uh, make a couple more alterations and let all this water flow back in, we will we'll, uh, make a start and strip it apart. I think, to be completely fair, all we're really going to need is, and this is not fancy guys, it's just a cheap little socket set, all we're going to need is, I believe, looking at them, I'm going to say 8mm, no, maybe not. Maybe a 10 mil. Nope. Let's 
have a look. Let's see what size. What size is that? There we go. So we've got, God knows, too rusty to see. It's got to be a nine mil, nine mil socket, because ten's too big. Nine's just just, just right. So a nine mil socket on little ratchet. What I'm going to do then is put a little bar on the underside with another one. Put another nine mil socket on there. All that one, crack it off, crack all these off, separate it apart, and replace the seals for the new ones. So get back to you in a tick. Right, guys. So got the door closed in here. Keep it a little bit warmer. <clears throat> it's actually climbing up 12.6 degrees in here already. So that little heat is godsend. Thank you very much, Vicky. Um, I don't know how much you're going to be able to see here. Hopefully, there you go. You can see the little valve, and all that I've used, or all that I'm going to need, is socket on one side, and in most socket sets you get what's well, like a little. The collies are a strong bar, but this isn't really all going to be all that strong. It's a tiny little fit, a little bar which you can attach a little uh, quarter-inch socket to. One on the underside, lock it into place. Other one on top, crack off. I've already cracked off all the nuts and loosened them all off. So now, really, all we should be able to do is keep removing the nut, slide out the bolt, and then what I'm going to do is to make sure I don't lose any of them, just whap it back on thread and bang it inside the little socket box there. And rinse and repeat with all four. And I've never done one of these before, guys, I've got absolutely no idea how this goes or what they're like on the inside or how easy they are to separate or what it is like on the inside. I'm hoping fingers crossed that when I do this I don't look a complete idiot and end up with a socket, sorry, and end up with this leaking apart or anything like that. I'm, I'm assuming that the two slides Let's see if we can make this up, elevate it up a little bit more. I'm assuming that this literally separates apart, you slide in the new seals and you replace the old. But these these were these cracked off really easy. Separate apart really easy. Now I'm bound to get, when I do this bit, I'm bound to get some water come out. There's going to be an element of water in there. I have got a couple of towels here that I can wrap around. <coughs> and I'm going to let the air out, sorry, let the, the water out this bit. And try not to get too much soaking the floor any more than what we've already had. I'm going to see just how much water is inside there. Yeah, there's still still a little bit but not too much but look but there you go separate off pretty easy separate that out and there we go there is the separated and this is how they work push that down closes off the, the slide valve but the seals are here on the inside I'm guessing we might need a little bit of a flat headed screwdriver to replace them flick them out if we can get them out there we go separate that off one seal on the inside on the outside there there's the old seal again rubber seal just on the inside of that I lied that's the little slide part so the other seal is in there so this side pushes into that section 
this way up and the other one slides over that section that way up so let's take the old ones off no, sorry that's the old ones off let's stick on the new ones so the new one goes onto this part Like so. So we've got the old one and the new one. And then the new one goes up, depending obviously your positioning, but my positioning, this one needs to go up on the inside of here. Like so, that valve back again through that, and then this one back together and pushing on to that one, and that's it. Pretty straightforward. We'll get a nut and a bolt take two of them off, separate them apart again and then we can push two through, locate it and then nip them back up in reverse order Second, be better if I put that the right way around so that we can uh, still have the slide valve facing out the right way. So that's back through there. Put them back in the same way as they came off, stood up from the bottom, not on from the top. Stood up from bottom and not back on on the top. Socket on bottom just to hold it in place. Socket back on the top. I ain't swinging on these because I don't want to crack the plastic. There's enough to nip them up. There's the seal for between the pump and the attachment. Make sure I put that one to one side, I don't want to lose that. Same again, rinse and repeat, dip them all up. I 
last one. Just nipped up, as in as tight as what they were to take off. Sockets back away, and that is how to replace your seals in a slide valve. These were obviously no good, but just sticking that packet out of the way. Um, these for a replacement set of these was literally 4 99 plus postage, I think it was about 10 quid odd. But a replacement, complete replacement um, slide valve, anything from 22, depending where you get them from, anything from 22 quid to 29 quid, depending on the supplier. But I'd rather pay. There's no, I've not had to do any alterations to the pipe work. I haven't had to uh, cut anything out, remove these when the solvent welded is a bit of a pain in the ass because it'd be new pipe work into the um, ultraviolet. It would have been new pipe work and have a new fitting to go onto the pump for the sake of a tenner and some new seals. I can reuse the same part again. I've just got to remember and note to myself that whilst this pump's running at 10,000 litres an hour not to close it before I shut the pump off because I've been shutting it beforehand and I think that what might be what blew the, the actual seals but um, I know out of all of them that I got I got three of these slide valves three of them were brand new and one of them was a, a, a second hand one uh, given to me by, by a friend so it could be that this was the old one. Can't really tell because they all look pretty much the same. So I never really, I know that the one that I got when it was gifted, although it might have been second hand, you wouldn't have told, you wouldn't have been able to tell because it looked like brand new. But that could be the reason why it actually leaked in the first place. The only thing I've got left to do now is reprime the pump because obviously we've airlocked that uh, by emptying this pipe. Once we've redone that and we've uh, topped this back up, so I'll open shed, I'll re-top this pump back up, which is basically filling the valve back up to the slide valve, clamp that back down onto place, start up the pump, give it a go, give it a run, and then give it a check. But that should be one repaired slide valve. Bear with me one second while I grab a jug of water and we'll uh, reprime this back up. But on this occasion, I'm going to try to do this a little bit better now because all the floor, the floor is not dry, dry. It's certainly drier than what it was last week. I'm going to try to do this without spilling too much. It normally takes about two and a bit jugs when pat. Sorry, it normally takes about two jugs, two and a bit jugs when it's empty, hopefully.
there you go. That two and a half juice to top it up. Bang the seal back in. Threaded, I think, there, guys, you idiot. There we go. Start the thread. Line that back down. Nip it, nip it up with a towel. And then, and then, all we need to do, plug the pump back in. We should hear that. should pull through. Sometimes if it doesn't pull through first go, I'll pause the pump and then kick it off again. <laughs> he says There we go. Sometimes it takes a couple of couple of little goes stopping and starting the pump, but it'll draw it through and it'll set it off and going again. So that barrel's gonna now fill back up again. The pond is slightly overflowing anyway, as you can see just there. Just overflows there in the same place as it did before. Um, so what I'm going to do now is let that let that just fill this barrel up, which will probably just take it down that little bit, stop the pond overflowing a bit, and then we should start flowing back out here. So the little one. Is up and running through this one, that barrel's filled and that one's going. This one's going to fill, throw into this one, into this one, and then return. You can hear it running now from that barrel into this one. This one is full and this one is full, so it should kick in. There we go. It's just starting to go now. So now, now the real test would be to see if my valve leaks. When I close this off, because what was happening when I want to service this pump, I was stopping the pump, shutting off, which keeps the water in this system. Um, so that then, um, service pump, take the leaves out, bits and bats, anything like that, put it back on, open the valve, it self primes it because all that pipe work is full with the water. And then it self primes the pipe back up, and twist it back on again, and then just kick the pump up and away it went again. But with this leaking, the water was coming out of this pipe, leaking all over the floor, and then I couldn't re-self prime it without having to do this jug with it. So that's why I've, I've got the little valve there for, so that I can re-self prime when I'm doing a bit of a filter clean or a service to the pump. And that was a bit of a nightmare last week as well. And I'll tell you guys just in case, if any of you guys out here or out there have got 
one of these pumps or any similar type of pump and when you take them apart to service them there is a small little black rubber seal on the inside now the small it's like an o-ring the small seal when I put my pump back together on the last video wouldn't stop weeping on the, the joint between the body of the pump as in the motor side and the body of the pump with the impeller so I took the rubber seal off I took it in the kitchen and I banged it in a pan of boiling water and I boiled it for about 25-30 minutes in a pan of boiling water and I kept boiling it I brought it back out, stuck it back on clamped it all back together, bolted it up leak stopped so the rubber expanded and created a seal again not ideally suited, what I really need to do is I need to get myself ordered a brand new seal but when you're stuck and you're in a bit of a you know a situation where as it was Christmas time, Christmas period and I couldn't get one because everywhere was shut it did get me out of a pickle so if you ever get any of your seals guys that don't or won't reseal back up again if you boil them up in a pan of water for a good 20 minutes, 25, 30 minutes you will be able to expand the rubber again by getting it hot in the boiling water and you'll be able to reseal your pump back up and uh, save yourself a little bit of trouble should you uh, get stuck in a situation like I was where you can't pick one up there then at that particular moment in time so there we go I have that for kneeling on so I didn't get a wet leg shove that back up there a bit of a mat um, these two towels now we didn't lose too much so not too bad I normally just have these hung up here I can dry the barrels off or I can just wrap them around that when I spill that little bit of water it's just enough to prevent it from soaking carpet or dribbling off onto that stone flag there that I've got which is basically just to bring it up to the same level as the pipework as it came through into the shed little flag topping but that's it no leaks all cured all running and uh, flowing out back into the pond everything back up and running as it should be so there you go guys that's relatively easy quite simple to do undo four nuts i think one was a nine mil and one was an eight mil or one was a yeah eight eight mil on the underside so one side's eight mil the other side nine or ten mil one or two so two little sockets one at top one at bottom crack them open slide them out pull them apart seal goes in one side seals in the other side whip them out click them in the new ones into place put it back together in reverse order piece of piece <laughs> easy as out quite quite surprised i thought they might have been a little bit you might have had to wiggle them out a little bit but no relatively simple means i can still use the same slide valve for a fraction of the price of replacing the slide valve obviously the bigger the slide valve the more expensive the seal kit would be that's for an inch and a half one um, but I do know between the inch and a half and the two inch there's pence in difference so I would imagine when you get up to a, a three inch four inch six inch eight inch you might be stepping up by a few more quid but in comparison to the replacement actual slide valve in full a huge saving I'm very simple to do anyway I'm gonna crack on get these filters clean We'll give fish a little bit of a feed if they want some let you have a look at them again and then uh, be wrapping up jobs for the weekend done and task completed catch up with you in a bit all right well that worked really well guys proper impressed gonna give them a little bit of a food bit of, bit of a food bit of a feed that little heat is brilliant 21.2 degrees about to turn it off it was melting my eyeballs in here nicely well insulated shed and it keeps nice and warm when you give these fish a little bit of food I'll let you have a quick look at them give them one little handful everybody seems like they're up and about and uh, having a cruise around so we'll see if they want to come up for a little bit of something to eat there you go my grown show show have been the first one. Not 
overly keen on it, but there's a little bit there for them. Look at that little snow white saga there. Good stunner. There's the Deutz uh, Kahaku, Benny Gori. All of them having a little bit of a feed. It's all they're getting for day. There's enough. A red Kajaku there coming in, just down here, look. Lovely. Everybody's looking really well. Only one fish in there with an issue, and that is the, uh, the Benny guy with the scales missing on its side. Hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll grow back. Uh, look at the little red jackal for a mouthful then. There's a little snow white again. The Yamabuki. Yeah, well happy with that Rick. That's already beautiful mate. They look stunning side by side each other them two. They're gonna be nice then when they get some size on them. Well happy with the fish, well happy with the condition, well happy with how they're looking. Chuffed the bits and as you can see there guys, flowing in nice, nice good return. Plenty of water being turned over. I'll let these guys have a little bit of a munch. Quite happy with a little sanky as well on the development of that. Just here. Nice type two, two, two step uh, patterning to it. With a minimal sumi coming up in little patches. I'm quite happy with that. As it develops, it's doing quite well. The only, the only funny bit to it is on the underside of its belly, it's got a little red circle underneath there as well. <laughs> Everything's doing cock on. The Benny Ginger's looking really good. Well happy with my stock now. Well happy with what I've got in there. There's only one particular fish. Well, there's two in there that are a bit pond fillers. And that's the uh, squash tomato and the 15 step kaku yinrin. But in itself, it's uh, a nice little fish. It's a bit of a pond filler. Done some growing last year a little bit. But the Matsukawa back is looking alright down here. And the, uh, the one from our Vince. It's doing love with that, mate. Love that fish. But yeah, really happy with them. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get a bit more growth on them. The Hiatsuri there as well, just come up for a mouthful. It always throws me that fish, I always think that it's clamped up because it's, pe it's right pectoral is black and it's left pectoral as it's coming towards us now is orange. So it always looks like it's either got a peck missing or it's clamped up because you can't see it because it's black. But it is there when you look carefully you can see it. It's uh, a nice little fish. Be happy when they all get some more size in them, they'll be looking good. So, I'm going to leave them to it, I'm going to leave them to it, let them have a little bit of something to eat and then that's it for this week guys, simple little cost saving tip for you, surprisingly easy, I, I mean I didn't think it was going to be complicated obviously but I mean it just goes to show you can save yourself a few quid just by replacing a few bits and bats and servicing a seal or a slide valve then to actually uh, have to replace it. Well, our Bethan's just come here, just popped in, bringing the, our little Rupert down. Popped it bathroom. <laughs> I see you've come in your shoes again. Oh, yeah. Hold on one second. I think everybody makes more use of these speed crocs than what I do. <laughs> There's our Rupert, he's just come down for a uh, popped it bathroom. That means my little Ted's here, so I'm going to get myself in, and you don't want to watch him having a pee. Um, 
There we go. Just been asked if I want fish and chips for my dinner. Brilliant. Uh, usual thing, guys. If you're enjoying this kind of content, do us a huge favour. Like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend. Until next time, I'm going to get myself in there and have my fish and chips. And I'll catch you all on the next one, guys. Keep smiling. And see you all soon. Come on then, Roop. Say hello. Hey, little boy. <laughs> there he is. This is our Sonny's little brother. Our Rupert. Good lad. Take care all. Catch you on the next one.